This one. Mm-hmm. With Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. Is that his name? We still I don't haven't know. figured it out. We'll figure it out. The guy that made Spawn. I don't know. It's interesting to see, like, it's it, he's kind of got the underdog story, right, where he left a... I mean, not necessarily because he was working for... He was doing Spider-Man. He was successful by the time he made the Switch. Yeah, I find that interesting. What he was doing before the Switch would have been the majority of people's definition of success. Yeah, and then he... But his outlook on it is neat because, I, you know, I have a similar outlook... You know, with art, like, you know, I didn't want to do, because even in art, you can become, you know, you can adapt your skills to meet some demand in in the market, right? You can become, if you're a photographer, you become a wedding photographer. But I didn't want to do that with, like, I didn't want to become an illustrator for just some, any magazine, right? So it's cool to see someone else have that same I guess mentality to say to know that there's like success just doesn't it doesn't mean just making money it's like more than that it's being able to make art is really where the I think why most people want to make money in creative industry is to be able to make more art well that's what it is for me sometimes you kind of get I get lost on this you know, kind of get stuck on that though, and kind like of lose uh, on the making money part. Yeah, you, it's easy to get lost in that and make decisions on that instead of. But I haven't yet because I, I mean, I haven't made a decision to where it's like totally affected my creativity. Because you know. yeah, but it's tough because you do need to make money because there's so much more to life than just the craft and at the very least to have that sustainable. And the other thing is when you're not making money, that also has a negative impact. I think on the art too, you know, um, like I don't think like when I was school, like art would get talked about as if it was life and death and you need art to live. I think art brings a lot of value to life, but I, you know, if you're going hungry and you can't pay rent, buying, like, a piece of art or creating is not the top priority. No. Um, Yeah, so I don't think if you're able to meet your basic needs, the art can definitely suffer. Yeah, it's like a balance, like, trying to find... You know, I've never been, like, out on the streets because I'm, like, making art or something. Like, there's no no need for that in my life to be, like, put out on the street because I'm I don't know if that like I think artists sometimes just think that's like how you should be and so they like say like I've seen someone's Instagram and it's like starving artists on their bio and it's like well for one you're not starving so you probably shouldn't say that <laughs> I, people are actually starving um, no offense to this person I guess they just don't understand or whatever it's on the internet it doesn't really matter anyways um, <laughs> But it's like, it's to me, when I see that, it's obvious that they're trying to be something. I think a lot of times, you know, with anything, any career, it's like, or just in life in general, we go with what we know because it's kind of, it's a little bit safer, a little bit easier instead of like, well, maybe I don't have to like portray myself as this. I can portray myself as I want to be mm-hmm. and not like, and so, yeah, I, I've, I've been able to create art and work a full-time job and you know I'd rather have it the other way so the art can really flourish but in the time in in the meantime I'm okay with the you know yeah and but I think with that there's become a definition of what an artist is and that idea of being a starving artist is romantic and you look towards these big names and that's kind of the illusion they put forward and what gets to me is that for younger emerging artists instead of tearing down what came before and setting up their own definitions and doing something things for themselves it's they're trying to like fit into that carved out path of what an artist is supposed to be and yeah I don't know I don't think 
because I've been in that role and in my opinion the art really suffers and and in a lot of ways right now like I don't know like I'm in like like, I guess earlier I was always like afraid of um, like losing that like edge that like hardness or whatever but now I'm like in like a successful like relationship and probably a little bit more domesticated than I've ever been and I think my creative output now is way more than it's ever been or at like cons- consistently I think back in the day it would be like two week bursts and then crawl into a hole somewhere so you're saying essentially what you're saying is you're farther away from what the idea of an artist is you're the furthest away you've been from that I- ideal artist persona but you're doing more art than you've ever been or doing better yeah. art than you've ever been doing yeah I mean like right now I don't have a day job and I don't have money really looking forward to that Trudeau <laughs> check to come in um, yeah but outside of that is well it's the same thing when I was like 16 and fancied myself like a punk and had um you know like a Mohican haircut and like a filthy jacket and stuff and very much looked the part I think the stuff that I'm doing now although like my image is probably a little bit more corporate and like I can blend into that environment I feel that I'm more like punk than I was then yeah I mean it's just kind of being smart too it's like you know what can you do more with can you do more as like this scummy person kicking around rocks or whatever or can you do more as the guy that cut his hair and or or whatever in your in your instance and whatever but yeah i think you can have way more impact from a position of power and And, like, as an insider, I think you can move the agenda. Like, more than being an outsider that's yelling about, like, pipelines or something. But, like, I find interesting with, like, the baby boomers and, like, hippies is that you have this um, mindset. And I think the majority of people got burnt out because they didn't see the changes and then got haircuts and entered those corporate roles and became bankers and then just... Um, like instead of getting into those positions with the minds with that type of mindset and having change, I think that's kind of comes with what we're talking about though. Like if you're just doing something not in your own way, you know, then you're just going to end up being persuaded by the people around you. And so either in that case, at the beginning, it was maybe for change, but you're still just doing, just being persuaded to do something so it can, that can have a really negative effect if what around you changes and all of a sudden you're swayed by your job. I mean, I've never been a banker, so maybe it's hard to change things in that industry. But, you know, again, going back to this documentary with um, Todd McFarlane? McFarlane? Jesus Christ. We'll look it up. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, guy that made Swan. and uh, But he, he didn't really allow... Um, the uh, the people around him to sway him with money or with that crap because it came down to the art, right? So, and what he valued and, and he kept that. If you have that kind of leading you, then you're going to end up, at least if you're not, you don't become successful, you know, financially, at least you've known that you've stayed, you know. And I, it's like staying true to yourself can be easily construed or whatever to you know I guess um, I'm just thinking of when people say oh you sold out or whatever even though they don't really know what the artist is trying to do or trying mm-hmm. to achieve like you could probably say that about um, I wish I knew his actual name Todd McFarlane let's go with that we'll switch up maybe Seth maybe Todd I don't know anyways um, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, I lost my thought on the whole fucking name thing. <laughs> no, I think what you're saying in terms of 
selling out. Like, I recently watched a documentary on Keith Haring, and, like, he did a, this thing where he opened up, like, a big retail store and was selling his art on T-shirts and pins and all, like, this type of stuff. And a lot of people came out and were like, yo, you're selling out. Like, how dare you become a capitalist pig dog bastard? Um, which, but, like, for him, it wasn't like he was making compared to like where his money was coming from, like that much money from that. And for him, mm -hmm. it was a way of making the art accessible, you know, like not everybody can buy a canvas, but everybody can probably scrape up 20 bucks to buy a t-shirt. And yeah, and it's, yeah, there's, there seems to be this attitude that the moment you start making money from your craft that you become a sellout and I guess for my definition it's if you adjust your moral compass for a paycheck and I think like that's the struggle I'm having right now like this week was a little bit weird with these like job interviews and going to these like less than ideal firms and just kind of like their approach and attitude towards business and you know so then you're in this position where it's like well I need a paycheck and I'm sure I could play this role for a little bit but yeah, I don't know yeah I mean that's I mean I don't think you will right like you you just said in not doing that or else you'd be doing it already I feel like I think like if I'm gonna adjust anything It would not be, you know, I don't know. I'm not even willing to adjust the, the art, like, you know what I mean? Like, so I don't think that's going to happen to me, but I don't want to get stuck in thinking, cause there's a, there's like an opposite to that. And if you just like never do anything, yeah, because you're worried about selling out or someone seeing you as selling out, it's like, you're never going to do anything. So it's like. You can only you only want to be so stubborn when it comes to certain things. I think if yeah you're stubborn towards your own values, that's okay. But if you're stubborn towards like well, and I think to like what degree like yeah, I don't think necessarily ever adjusting the um, your values, but at the same time, like you hear these stories of like whatever talented creative that could have been like the next great thing since life spread but was unwilling to I guess play the game yeah. a little bit and and I think that goes back to what I'm saying before like if you can get into a position of power like you can have more influence than being like an outsider you know if you're um, yeah like if you're able to like become somebody like Keith Haring or like get onto um, that level, then you're suddenly able to bring like other people like up with you. I think it's like getting into that position without losing those values. Like I think if you get into that position and then your only concern is like making money and doing that whole thing and like forgot like the work ethic or the attitude that got you there, that's a different conversation. Yeah. But at the same time, it's, like, frustrating because for me and you, we've been at this, like, for ever. Well, that's not forever. Um, what, has it been? Destroy the Internet came out 2014, I think. Before that was... We were born. doing, like, the voice stuff with other people. About five years. Safe to say. Yeah. Like definitely just, just, just over 2012. Yeah, when the world was gonna end, right? But then it didn't, and then we survived the apocalypse, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we should just be grateful. Like everything after uh, 2012 is just extra time, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but we haven't necessarily like trans transitioned into like that type of 
success and not that like I'm bashing or like feel hard done by like the position that we're on like I think we've learned a lot of great things and we're doing good work and I don't know and it's cool that we're like working with artists from like around the world and doing that but but like outside of the the creativity and the art like there's a whole like other um life you know like yeah like the art's really just like a job and like the thing that gets to like me like I had this thought a while ago where about yeah because my older brother's like having like kids now and which like leads to reflection on that and I think like as a kid or the people that are like really close to you like they don't care what your job is Mm -hmm. you know and then you like slave away for this trade which maybe ultimately doesn't overly matter yeah that much no I mean there's so much more to um life I mean if I was sitting in, you know, the top of some office on the 20th floor or whatever, and I had fine cigars, and I don't know, just, you know, that's the image I think of, like, success in America or something, <laughs> I don't know, which is not at all <clears throat> what I want, or what I see as successful, Yeah. which is maybe why I thought, well, I should become an artist, they don't make any money, it's perfect. <laughs> But I just don't see that. That seems like a very lonely life. And I've kind of had that and not made money. And that was like, I think that was enough to be like, yeah, I don't want this even if I'm making money. Because like, like working away, I still do it. Like I work quite a bit more than I think I'd like to, you know, because I'm working a job and then I come home. But I still have been able to find time for other things for the most part but um even how where I'm at now it's like I need more time for other parts of my life too right I can't just that's part of the reason why I work so on stuff so much is that I want to have a time where I don't work all the time you know or I have some freedom to go um spend time with friends on you know on occasion. Houseboats or something. Yeah, like yeah. houseboats. Or, or like, yeah, or being in a position where you're able to, I don't know, take like month sabbaticals or whatever. And yeah, I think you're right. Like that, like idea of success is like lonely. And I think like that's the path a lot of people end up on. It's, yeah, you get like a fancy apartment that you live in by yourself and then you hop in your car and like drive to your corporate job and you're like in an office by yourself and and well, it's oh sorry go ahead no, go on oh it's just it seems like that's always like even when i was like my uncle he was quite wealthy and um but he had time for his like family and stuff and eventually you know and but it always kind of seemed to me that the idea in his family was that you go you figure that stuff out first, the, the success, or maybe it's just, I thought, I don't know, it could be a number of things. I don't know if it's coming from him or coming from, you know, outside world, and I just relate it to him because he's wealthy, yeah. but um, that you need to figure that shit out first. Like, that's what it seems like people say, like, you got to go to college, focus on that before you go and find a, a partner or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. D- but I don't think it has to be that way. Like, a lot of things in you know, our society is like, it seems like this, people think there's like a predetermined way to go about things, but there's not. Yeah, there's like a checkpoint sequence. You know, like, why can't you find someone and then, you know, go through those things together or whatever, mm-hmm. whoever, you know, that may be. Or maybe you don't, but it's like, it doesn't have to be any way that, I think that's one of the biggest things in, I don't know, not just art, is just like this idea that there's some pre- or uh, there's like some, I don't know, guidelines like a fucking uh, manual to life, but I don't know. No, it's a mess. Um, yeah, but I guess for me, like I would much rather, like do a lot of work up front in like the earlier portion of life. So when you're, 
like kind of moving into that position where you're having a family and doing that stuff. It's not like if I had a kid right now, like it would be, it would be bad. Yeah. A little bit like, cause there's different, cause you're responsible for life. And like right now I don't like outside of, you know, a small select things of responsibility. Like I don't have much and I think that changes, but maybe at the same time it's good. Right. Cause like we have that, like, pal who had, like, a surprise baby and he, like, leveled up and is, like, a way better human now than he was. Yeah, I think it can. Like, a little bit of pressure. <laughs> it's like, do or die. You got to feed know. this kid. I mean, I don't think it's necessary. I think it does. I think the problem with that is, like, I mean, in his situation, it's not, like... I think the problem with that is sometimes people see that as, like this is going to change my life, so I'm going to do this. You know what I mean? This is getting into a whole other side of things. It's like talking about, like, I don't know. Uh, this is like a whole other debate. But I think um, that you have to be careful in doing things to think they're going to save you from your the shit you got to actually deal with. Or mm-hmm. but I think in his situation, it's different, but I think that does happen. Like, Yeah, people are like, I'm going to go on this trip or like take this course or buy this how to be an artist book and it's going to change my life like this this thing's the beginning of the end and it's it tends never to be that you know like the people that move to a different city and then realize the same problems are there too if you haven't addressed the actual issues yeah which is like I mean I definitely did that and um I think with, like, our creative career, it's been that, you know, how many times we changed the name, and I don't know if that, I think I'm happy that, we've talked about this before, that we're happy that it's evolved into what it was, but I don't think that, like, that wasn't what needed to change. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the name or whatever is not necessarily irrelevant. Maybe if we had just sat down and come up with the name that we're at now, like, put that as a priority but the other ones weren't bad though that's the thing is like all our past ideas were all still I think really good yeah and um so I don't know yeah it's it's doesn't you gotta be careful to think that you know certain things are gonna change you know like if I'm I don't know come you know addicted to drinking coffee let's say that you know anything other than just stop drinking coffee is going to change that like i'm going to now drink pepsi in the morning well then i'm just drinking pepsi every day or whatever you know what i mean it's like (laughs) be careful to make sure that what you're doing to change your current situation isn't just yeah a a substitute or some sort of i don't know cover up or whatever that you actually look at the real issue so, um, like, what do you think is, like, kind of currently, like, in our way that's, like, preventing us from getting to that next level or, like, that, like, vision of success, like, we have for ourselves in the project? I mean, we've never really set a goal financially or whatever, like, we want to... Or just a goal in general. I don't know. We have goals, <laughs> it's like, usually short-time goals and... Which is good. I think we've, like, reached a lot of, you know, points that we set. Maybe the points need to be... Maybe the bar needs to be higher. I don't know. Maybe that would help. Maybe... I think... I think, like, kind of perseverance is really our strong suit, though, and which which will, I think, inevitably lead to some sort of success. That's the weird thing about goals to me always is like you don't know what it's going to be but maybe you set the goal so at least you're working towards something. Like I was like I said earlier, uh, the other day I was listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger talk about goals and whatever, whatever and it's kind of weird though when you think about it like his situation is very much his situation so I can only like but yeah he's talking about um, you know 
becoming like the I don't know Miss Mister Universe or something I don't know like the top of yeah. bodybuilding, and it's like so he did something every day basically to get to that point, but it's like how do you set that in the creative world like there's not like there's some uh, magazine championship maybe there is but it's like I, I don't even shit no one no one's ah uh, there's. <laughs> There's stuff. I but mean, would like, it matter even if you, like, reach that? Well, anything? I think, like, for that stuff, like, it's external things. Like, I guess we could be like, yeah, we're going to go win a stack award or, um, like, what's in Edmonton, like, the Ace Awards for design. Yeah. But let's be realistic. Like, nobody's fucking giving Chubb an award for, like, anything like that. I think it's, like, too far out. And also, like, do you need that external motivation? Although I think we could set some goals and like have um like that i think like the most important part of a goal is without one you don't have anything to measure against right so like in that situation you described with arnold Schwarzenegger, he's comes up with this like huge goal and like every day i'm going to do something small that's going to move me towards that i think without um that goal then you're like doing things every day but then you like aren't seeing the benefit I think like that can be an issue for us like yeah our ability to grind has never been an issue but then I think what happens is you're just grinding and then there's no finish line you get burnt out you're like wait where where are we heading like we're we're literally just punching through a wall (laughs) yeah and then there's just another wall on the other side of it (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) And then you look over it and the wall's not forever and you could have just walked around it or something. Yeah. There's that, yeah. And also, definitely. I don't think we're, like, good at celebrating victories. Because we, 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 like, have set goals in the past. Like, we're going to do this thing and then you complete it and you feel like... I guess my issue with goals is you set this goal and then you achieve it, but the expectation is once you achieve this goal you're going to have, I don't know, like divine happiness. Like that's going to be it for life. And then you can just coast, but then you get there and it's like nothing. And you're like already looking at the next thing to overcome. No, that's happened quite a few times. Uh, Even in other things like jobs, like all this job is going to be the job that is the greatest job of all. (laughs) And it's like, I don't know, I think it's more of like a, you know, kind of corny, but like a, a in the now approach to everything. And when you get to that, like knowing that there's always going to be some sort of obstacle you have to overcome. And when yeah. you get this, even when you get the dream job, like there's going to be, maybe there's just some prick that you work with or something. And now you got, you're in this dream job, but then you got to deal with this nah, just shit, kill you know? <laughs> yeah, you just kill him. Um, <laughs> There's always going to be something. So to think, like, that it's, yeah, uh, means to end or whatever. And yeah. It's just, like, it's you're going to be disappointed, I feel like. Whereas if you just kind of know what's coming and you, you're able to adapt to these things, maybe you don't care. Then you don't care if you quit your job. If you know, you know, maybe this isn't the best job. Yeah. But at least you kind of, like, maintain a happiness because you're like, I don't like this job. I'm going to do something for myself. Or I don't like... I don't like this art, so I'm going to paint over it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I do that all the time. Like, if I don't, if I screwed something up, I don't care anymore. I just, like, white it out or paint over it. Or, yeah. It's like to put all of that pressure in thinking that the next painting or next song or something is going to be the greatest song, I don't think it allows for that, like, the real uh, enjoyment of artists to be able to have free freedom I feel like and to be able to change that yeah I agree with any I, given notice. I agree with that but then there's there's like making art and then there's pursuing a career in the creative industry um, and then it becomes a little bit different because I think a pivotal aspect of a career is that it's predictable income yeah um, so yeah I think like there's some different choices that, that have to be meet around it when you're like making art with that kind of intent in the back of your mind and then maybe the other thing is like why we haven't ever set um 
major goals for ourselves or like the projects is that you can't be disappointed if you don't have a goal That's you know true. like if Arnold Schwarzenegger went into that composite co- competition and came dead last you're like oh god or I don't know and then you make up wake up the next day and keep going but no I think that's a good point like um kind of like it just depends like realistically you don't need to be disappointed anyways if you have the right outlook set yeah. the goals anyways I don't know the way Arnold Schwarzenegger looked at it, it made it seem like if you set a goal you're gonna get there kind of thing but I mean I, like I don't know that's the whole thing with like people that made it to the top and then they talk about it you know that's like always the same advice like just like work hard and be determined and it's like you're just disputing the same stuff like that it was just like what capitalism was built on and I mean I like parts of it and I I agree with parts of it but I think like yeah I don't know sometimes it gets a little like yeah, but what like what really happened there? Like, are you not telling me everything? Is that all it is? I don't know because I haven't gotten there, so mm-hmm. I can't say. Well, I'm sure, to a degree, that it is right. But at the same time, I think we can put a lot of mental blocks on ourselves that prevent, like, prevent you from doing that. So yeah, like hard work and determinations, um, great, and like that's probably how you get there in the simplest form. But does that? Ad- Dress like somebody's lack of confidence or like what's preventing them from like stringing together those like good days where they're consistently moving towards their goal or like maybe like you're from a family that wants you to, to be a doctor and there's like that pressure and how do you overcome that like I think there's just too many variables but yeah I think also like what you're saying there's like and everybody's a fucking internet guru uh-huh. Now it's like you turn on YouTube and it's like some pop up video that runs for five minutes and you're like, yo man, I'm just trying to like listen to Curtis Mayfield here. I don't want you to be spewing nonsense on how I Facebook advertise to sell T shirts. Um, yeah, but it's like it's all the same messaging. I mean, and if you think like really think about it, if it was as they say the step by step thing. Like, and also, too, there's a, it's like a whole pyramid scheme shit almost because there's a reason. Oh, yeah. Because it, it can only go so far and then it collapses. You can only have so many people selling shit about... It's, it's like a weird business because people are making money on showing how they made money, talking about... They, but they're making money talking about how they made money. It's such a weird thing to me. Like, I mean, at least, like, Gary Vee's got, like... He had a, a business that he made a better business. Like, that's kind of like, okay, that's useful. But now he's, and he still has a firm. So, I mean, that's pretty cool too. But some of these guys, they're just like, that's how they make their money is off telling people how Yeah. To make money. Like, there was this podcast was I was listening to bizarre. forever about like writing, like being an author. Um, and like, I was into it and like, it was pretty good and this guy's like an author and like interviewing people and they're dissecting on like how to be an author and like should you self-publish and whatever and there was some insight but then like one day I went to like check out his books that he's written and all his books that he put has put out are books about how to be an author so he's just like selling this idea on how to do something where he actively hasn't done it you know and then I read um, Stephen King's book on like writing and like that that resonates because you're like yeah you're like the top of your industry and you're like commenting on your lessons there compared to it'd be like like a like some boxing coach telling you how to fight but they've never been in a fist fight it's like oh, I watched some Bruce Lee movies this is how you do it and then <laughs> but and then like I think like the marketplace is like the majority of people don't actually want to achieve their goals like they they don't actually care like it's just like me listening to this podcast or like me buying this book feels good and like I feel like I'm moving um towards it it's like buying a gym membership and then never going yeah 
fucking asshole. Which I think kind of, like, makes me think that, like, that's why you shouldn't be doing art. For the money, solely, definitely not. Like, and, or, like, to try and even be the best. It's, like, because then you're just going to... It doesn't seem like... Well, there's no, there's no end to that. And it's, like... I get more out of just making something solely for myself. It's kind of, I guess, selfish, and I don't necessarily make it solely for myself, if I'm being honest. But it's like this kind of, I've had the approach where it's like 100% like trying to uh, do stuff to make money off of it. There's been times where I've had that. and then But the times where I'm happiest is where I'm like, I don't care if this looks like shit but I'm going to try to make it look, you know what I mean? It's like, I can't, mm-hmm. I can't have that mentality, even though I'm trying to do my best. If it's not good at the end of the day, it's not like, I have to realize that that's going to happen. There's going to be bad drawings. There's going to be bad, you know, but there's also going to be good drawings to have like such a like black and white outlook. I don't think is healthy. So it's kind of like set your goal, try to make it, but the, maybe the goal isn't there to, um, to actually get to necessarily, it's there to learn from. Because if whether or not you reach the goal or not, you're trying to do something you've never done before, and you're gonna learn something from that. So, yeah. Then, well, yeah. I think like that's the better form of motivation if it's coming from like an internal place. It's like I want to master this. Like I want to produce art um, that's like for me and develop my craft compared to like, I want to win an award or I want to land the date, like the dream job or make this much money. Um, yeah. Cause all that stuff is like short lived. And then like what happens when you achieve it? Yeah. Like, and then when you're making it, I feel like in that state of mind, I've always not enjoyed making it. That's the biggest thing is when I have the other mentality where I know the outcome is not necessarily mm-hmm. control, but I, I can try my best at it. While I'm doing it, I'm happy. Yeah. And I'm not like thinking about who's going to buy it as I'm painting it. I'm just thinking about, oh, well, this makes it look better or this doesn't or yeah. whatever I'm learning as I go. Yeah. And then it's like, what what's the point of doing that? Like if you're already working a day job that's not necessarily making you happy and then you're coming home and doing the art and it's not necessarily making you happy because you're trying to do like designs for fidget spinners or whatever's in vogue you know yeah I get that <laughs> oh it's the cat yeah I thought that was like my stomach for a second Seven and a half. <laughs> I'm waking up um what do you think cat I think there you have it good <laughs> Where's the best? Uh, you guys are going to make it. Yeah, I think... I think we should establish, like, some goal and, like, have something to work towards. And and I think, like, what would be, like, interesting or where these podcasts might, like, develop into something is if, you know, we do achieve that and then you you have this like backlog of like honest conversations of the climb compared to somebody that's like i'm fucking mike tyson of the the design industry and this is how yeah i guess then we can have it on record what uh our goals are maybe we can i don't know what are we how are we doing for time maybe we can end it on wrap it up we can end it on what we what our goals are for you know yeah, I think... Maybe specifically Chum. Maybe. For sure. I think, like, yeah, two type of goals. I think for, like, an external goal, like, having the project being able to make, like, 80000 in a year, which is really nothing for a business. Like, if me and you could be able to take, like, you know, a salary of, like, 30000 yeah, and then having, you know, 20000 that goes into, like, the production of like, the magazines and the art shows and, like, doing that type of shit. Fuck, man. Be laughing. But I'm sure, like, you'd get there and be like, now I want a Cadillac. Um, and in terms of, 
like internal like motivational stuff like I want to do like just better work like do bigger bigger pop-up shows or like maybe eventually do something weird in a gallery and like I think it would be cool to put out um, like a book that's just like our work like a full kind of book like with the writing and like the illustrations and do like a really cool packaging for that maybe move into like more of a fuller publication yeah newsprint fuck it I want to be vice yeah and what about you I don't know I think I just like it's kind of I guess, I mean, we've been talking about money not being a motivator, but, and it's kind of like this weird gray area where it's like, you know, you know that money gets you time in a sense, or can, maybe not, I don't know. I just want more, more time to work on more things and develop the, the art because there's always something I know I can change and make better. And I think maybe that if I have more time, but. Yeah, I'd like to even just make, well, it's tough to say. I think this is why I'm I'm not good at goals because I'm like, I I don't know. I, I guess if I'm being honest, yeah, I'd like to be, as you say, you know, if you make $80,000 off the project, um, you know, you can pay a salary and then hopefully do more with the project and then inev- or eventually, you know, kind of build the community around that. I think having full time if we're doing what we're doing now with you know this part time I feel like we could do a lot more if we had it as oh, a so full much more. you know if I'm working on this thing full time then I think I, I think it could be taken to another level yeah and, and what that another level could do for for you know the world or whatever for me or my world or whatever yeah, like the small community, like what's the value you can 